Hello and welcome back, and today we have another episode of Goji's Thrift Box. And to reiterate the concept of this video series, I have this box full of mostly vintage toys, things that I've picked up from various flea markets and thrift stores, and I pull an item out of the box and tell its story. So let's see what we've got today. Interesting. Let's talk about this bear. Back in the 1970s and 80s, there was a toy maker called HG Toys. I wasn't able to find a great deal of information about this company. I do know it was founded by a gentleman named Steve Lebensfeld. Mr. Lebensfeld's father was a toy manufacturer in New York. And as a result, he had an enduring love for both toys and the business of making them. Before he was 20, Lebensfeld had designed his first toy, an indoor basketball hoop that hung on the back of a door. Many of us have seen this toy over the years. He eventually founded the business HG Toys based in Hong Kong. In 1987, Lebensfeld also co-founded the company Toy Biz, which is a company I'm sure most of us have heard of. After he sold Toy Biz, he went on to found a third toy company called Toymax which had great success throughout the 1990s. As far as I can tell, Toy Max was purchased by Jack Specific in the early 2000s. HG Toys started out primarily as a maker of jigsaw puzzles. Some of the earliest jigsaw puzzles I remember having as a child were these fairy tale based puzzles that were made by HG. HG Toys held licenses for a number of properties. All the usual suspects in the 1970s like Star Trek, Planet of the Apes, Marvel Comics, and Space 1999. They had a series of Spider-Man team-up puzzles. I had all of these when I was a kid. And they also had a series of Godzilla jigsaw puzzles. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, HG Toys continued to acquire licenses and expanded their range to include role-play toys, rack toys, and play sets. In the late 1970s, HG created two of the greatest play sets ever made, in my opinion. Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, and Godzilla vs. the Tricephalon Monster. They also acquired the license to the movie Alien in 1979, and released a number of products to tie in with the film. The most famous alien toy from that time is of course Kenner's so-called Big Chap figure, but there were other toy companies like HG, marketing products to kids that were based on that R-rated movie. Into the 1980s, HG continued acquiring licenses for many of the popular properties of the day, such as these He-Man and Skeletor banks from Masters of the Universe, items from Voltron, and this Transformers Decepto Pack, which was a role-play and dress-up set. Around 1987, HG took the step into action figures, creating two ranges of prehistoric creatures. There was the Dinosaur Warrior series, for which they created four different dinosaur action figures. A T-Rex, Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus, and Triceratops, and paired them with a couple of cavemen. They also had a miniature range of the Dinosaur Warriors, which were smaller PVC-style figures. Then there was the Mammoth Warrior series, which paired those same cavemen figures with a saber-toothed tiger, a woolly mammoth, and a cave bear. And that brings us to this handsome fella. This is the HG Toys Mammoth Warrior Cave Bear action figure. He stands about eight inches tall. He has a movable head and movable limbs. And you can see he is sculpted to stand upright rather than on all fours. The head is made of a harder ABS plastic, while the rest of the body is made of a softer PVC style plastic. The head is a harder plastic to accommodate this action feature. With the lever on his head, you can move his jaw up and down. Not that much, but it moves. There was a little surge in popularity of dinosaur toys in the late 80s. Like Tycho's Dino Riders. 
and the dinosaurs that appeared in the Masters of the Universe toy line. There were also toy makers like Imperial, continuing to make generic dinosaur toys. And while the Imperial toys were solid with no articulation, HG toys went a step further and created their generic dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures as action figures. Let's do some comparisons. Here's the cave bear with the saber-toothed tiger from Imperial Toys. Here he is with the giant ground sloth from the Dino Riders line. And in case you missed it, there was a thrift box video featuring this ground sloth. And here's the cave bear next to the woolly mammoth from the Lennard Primal Clash line. And just for fun, here's the cave bear next to a wampa and a couple of stormtroopers. So you can see how he scales with three and three quarter inch. And no matter who wins that fight, I think those snow troopers are going to lose. I had all of the HG Toys Dinosaur Warrior figures in my original collection, and they're something that I'd like to acquire again. Fortunately, there's something that you can get quite reasonably today. They weren't at all scientifically accurate, but they were a great throwback to dinosaur movies and cartoons and comic books from the 1960s and 70s. I'm sure not a lot of people remember the name HG Toys, but if you were a kid in the U.S. growing up in the 70s or 80s, you probably had several HG Toys to play with. While doing research for this video, I found that HG is a huge rabbit hole to go down. Not only for the toys, but also for the huge number of puzzles that they produced. I loved jigsaw puzzles when I was a kid, and it's nice to see in this age of video games, YouTube, and social media that jigsaw puzzles are still popular. With big box stores like Target and Walmart still having an entire jigsaw puzzle section in their toy departments. I remember those shelves being bare back in 2020 for reasons, but I always make it a point to stop in the puzzle section and see if there's anything interesting. Like this puzzle featuring classic Marvel Comics Christmas themed art that I picked up last year. That's it for my little history of HG Toys and my look at the Mammoth Warrior Cave Bear. Did you have this cave bear when you were a kid? Or do you remember having any other HG Toys as part of your playtime? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.